Hello and welcome to another Writerly Witterings. It's another talk on inspirational writers. Cheers. I will apologise in advance. I am working today with a camera that was dropped a couple of weeks ago and I'm making a series of videos now so that I can send the camera off to Nikon hopefully to be repaired. We live in hope. However, today I'm going to talk about a writer who was another one of those who was famous and enormously popular but who in recent years seems to have disappeared off the bottom of the map. He was an Englishman, he was an engineer, a very good engineer I believe, and after some years he left England to go to Australia, where I think he lived out the rest of his life. The guy I'm talking about is Neville Shute. Not someone that many people have heard of nowadays, but his writing was fantastic. And I came to know him and love him because my father, I, I think, considered him the best novelist of his age. And he was so pleased when one birthday he found a whole series of leather-bound novels by Neville Shute, which he gave to me. Now, there are many books that he wrote. The ones that stick out in my mind are Trusty from the Tool Room, On the Beach, and A Town Like Alice. Oh, and Requiem for a Wren. I've forgotten that. Each of them is quite brilliant. I would... I'd find it very difficult, in fact, to select any one of those books as being the best representation of his work. The trouble is that his characterisation was so tight, so precise, that any one of the books stands out really well. But I think I'm going to plump for... It's got to be either Requiem for a Wren or On the Beach. And I think I'll go for On the Beach because in the present day we've got so much fear and trepidation um, with the increasing problems between Russia and America. We've got the fears that um, Brexit could cause. It's a troubling time. So let's think about a nice uplifting book. On the Beach. On the Beach is basically the story of a number of Australians, mostly um, in the Australian Navy, on a submarine. They go back to Australia, they meet their wives, they talk, they have friends round. Um, it's very sociable and gradually very very quickly as you're going through the book you realize that this is the apocalyptic story people have been allowed to have pills which will kill them um, no need for any prescription people are entitled to them and the reason why there ha is there has been a nuclear holocaust the whole of Europe Russia America have already been wiped out and now the nuclear winter is about to hit Australia and during the book of On the Beach, there is a wave of radioactivity that is coming down across Australia and the people in their nice, quiet, suburban area are watching the news and listening as people are committing suicide. The nuclear devastation is approaching and they know they have limited time to live. And so it's a, a study in different characters about how they would plan for the end of their days, knowing exactly when they're going to be killed by the destruction of the planet. It's the sort of book which I would not say is a light-hearted read, <laughs> not even slightly, but it is enormously thought-provoking 
and it is one of those books where when you've read it you are not going to forget it it's not a book you put aside and think oh well that's nice let's go on to the next little cheerful Terry Pratchett or whatever it's a book that will stay in your mind it certainly stayed in mind I first read it in the early 70s when I was an early teen and I read it again two three years ago and it was as fresh in my mind then as it was when I first read it a, a truly fantastic book I thoroughly recommend it there is one other book which I would advise people reading and that's a fantastic book which is his life story it's his autobiography he called it slide rule because he was an engineer by training he spent a lot of time in the aerospace industry initially starting out with uh, Barnes Wallace the inventor of the bouncing bomb when they were both working on the R100, R101 projects. Now, if you don't know, they were an absolute study in the difference between capitalist businesses working for the best of the business compared with socialist-type principles where it's believed that the government will always know and do best. The two projects ran concurrently. The idea was that the British Labour Party wanted to prove that it was far, far better to have government running a, a big contract, designing a new airplane. There was a private enterprise business designing their own aircraft. Now, the disaster, obviously, over in Belgium when the craft disintegrated um, and caught fire and killed almost all of the occupants was the government controlled one because it was a fiasco from start to finish uh, just as an indication they decided to go for diesel engines because they had lots of diesel engines available diesel was cheap and they thought that diesel would be more efficient than trying to use a load of petrol engines so they fitted diesels to this enormous blimp and it couldn't take off because the diesel engines themselves were too heavy so they had to instead of replacing the diesels with petrol, no, I couldn't do that, they'd made a government decision to stick to diesel, so they cut the thing in half, put in a load of extra infrastructure and shoved more hydrogen um, containers inside it. And it did take off, but it radically damaged the flying capabilities of the machine. So it, they found that it would kept, keep diving as they were flying along for no particular reason. Whereas the capitalist designed machine, they decided to go with petrol because petrol was lighter, the engines were lighter, and they knew the petrol engines were more efficient. Um, they didn't have to keep changing the structure of the machine so often because they'd already made their designs properly. And so it flew to Canada and back without any problem, no great hiccups. They weren't perfect by any stretch. These were still more or less, it was still a prototype machine. But the disaster of the other machine meant that the um, capitalist designed one was shelved anyway. Nobody wanted to fly on such devices anymore. So Slide Rule, I can thoroughly recommend it. It is a fantastically interesting book. It gives you a real insight into how things were in those days, especially into how easy it was to get into, for example, the aerospace industry. But Neville Shute is a writer that everyone should try. If you don't get a chance to read either of them and you see a book, Trustee from the Tool Room, do buy it and read that. That's a delightful book that, whereas On the Beach is a depressing book that's all about how the stupidity, greed and cynicism of the world can affect things, Trustee from the Tool Room is the exact opposite. It's how someone who's completely unknown to other people but who is known because of his work, can therefore find friendship all over the world. It's really life-enhancing as a book, I'd say. So there you go. My writer of the week this week, Neville Shute. A great writer, brilliant novelist, and highly recommended. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to go back to my cup of tea now. Hope you enjoyed that, as I say. Um, if you did, please hit the like button because YouTube likes like buttons and share it because then I can get some more people watching it and subscribe if you haven't already. And here's some other stuff which hopefully will be useful. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks very much for watching. Take care.